So this is Otlinko, the original Kwanlogo inventor. And then this is Frankie Lee, who polished the team. Um, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring these people, we're trying to get the government or the people of Ghana to recognize be these people. Be to my sense, these people are really, really not recognized at all. No one knows these people. But the, the Copyright Association of Ghana is taking copyright from Panlogo, but it's not coming to these people, which is very, very, very bad. I remember some time in 1995-96, I record this very band. And uh, after recording them, we have to go and ask permission from the Copyright Association and s so that we can sell the cases. And I have this idea to record this group because no one in Ghana will record this group anyway. No one would like to buy a cassette which carries these songs. But I have the idea because they've been playing in Funas and Adorans and people love it. Where they play, if they play in, people just go crazy. So I thought that, no, why don't we record group and put them on cassette and try to sell it to the people? Maybe they will do it. So I approached these people uh, and I said, look, let's go and record and try to put it on cassette and then sell it. And these guys, they don't have money. So I said, look, I can talk to a producer friend of mine and then we see what we can do for you. So we do these recordings. Trying to sell these recordings, we have to ask permission from these people and they have something that they will sell for us, which we can stick it on the cassette before we can sell. They sell these things for the for the for the people who play funk high life for let's say five ten cents. That's let's say fifty cities. And they want to sell this thing for these guys for hundred cities. So these guys came to me and said, Look, the guys want to sell a thing for us hundred cities instead of fifty cities. Why? So I went to the office and I asked them, why are they selling this thing so much to these guys? And they're telling me, because the thing belongs to the nation. So they have to say so that the, the nation is going to take this money. And I said, no, I don't think that is right because, because the nation is losing this. No one cares about this. Even this thing on this cassette, who's going to buy it? The people in the country will not buy this. So they sent me to the office with a big lawyer with his tie, coat, everything, and I'm there. And he's also there saying, the nation have to charge these people because, because the thing is for the nation. And I asked the guy that, do you know where Palogo came from? Do you know when Palogo start? Do you have records that you can show me where the Palogo is coming from? Or do you have any story about Palogo? And this guy is there. But everybody knows Palogo, if you say Palogo, people know, yes, he's coming to, from Ghana. And I say, yes, but let's, but let's go to things like, um, you can't say Palogo belongs to Ghana because you have no evidence, because there's a lot and lots of reading from Ghana, which is from, have a route from Nigeria or from uh, Togo or from wherever, you see? So we, we talk a lot, and I talk, I talk, I talk, and I think they 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 start they, they came down and they give this. So they, them. So they didn't realize that Otto was a. Uh, they don't the, know also to Lincoln. He was the original composer. <coughs> they don't and know they think him. that it's a traditional rhythm that's they been don't know him. That's why I go and I went and challenged them because if the money is coming to this man, then no problem, you know. And these people, what they're trying to do, these people play. They just follow the footsteps of these people. So that's what they play. But these people, they stopped playing a long time. And so these young boys are uh, just trying to, do, to still keep their culture. 
So I was very, very happy to see them still keeping the culture alive, you know. But no one cares about this. So I was very, very shocked when they, they asked them to pay more than the people playing funk. So I told the people that the people playing funk, trying to uh, promote American music, they should pay like 200 CDs to promote American music. So these people promoting Ghanaian music, who no one cares in this country, you know, they're spending their money. They don't know who's going to buy this stuff. They have to get this for free. Even the government have to pay them again to produce this thing for free because no one cares. And this is what our people need. If you open the television, it's full of American things. If you open the radios, it's full of American things. So this is the time we have to support these people to bring Ghanaian music alive.